Now at the heart of WP Tuts is dynamic content and one of the tools that opened up so many possibilities with Elemental was dynamic content for Elemental or DC for E as I've always called it. Now, this had one limitation. You could only use it with Elemental. Admittedly, with the free version, you didn't need Pro to use it. But one of the core features of that was the tokens and tokens opened up so many possibilities. Well, I'm glad to say that they've taken on board feedback and made that even more powerful. So move over dynamic content for Elemental and take a look at dynamic short codes. Now this is still at the time of recording a beta product. So if you wanna get on the beta list, well, you can sign up through this. I've been lucky enough to work with Giovanni to take a look at this, test things out. And I wanna to bring to you just some really simple examples of why you may want to take a look at this. I don't like using the term game changer very often, but this does open up game-changing options to things beyond what you can do with Elemental. So let me just quickly demonstrate what I'm talking about. First of all, dynamic shortcodes, what exactly is it? Well, it allows us to grab data from pretty much anything inside WordPress, including things like WooCommerce, advanced custom fields, toolset, pods, and so on. And then we can use that in a multitude of different ways. Now, I'm gonna give you some really simple examples in this video, but what it'll do is it at least whet your appetite for what you could do with it when this is released. As you can see, we can use this with Elemental without the need for DC for E, dynamic content for Elemental. We can use it with Gutenberg, Oxygen, Breakdowns, with ACF, Jet Engine, Pods, WooCommerce, Metabox. You have a lot of options, including native WordPress functions. So let me just show you how this all works. Once the plugin is installed, you'll have a new entry called Dynamic Shortcodes. If we hop into there, you've got some basic things you can set up. You can come in and choose where you want to access this. So if you don't want this inside block content or in your RSS feed, you can enable or disable what you want. And currently, that's basically all there is to it. And that's pretty much all we need. If we come into the Getting Started and Demo, this will give you a brief overview of how you can use this information. And basically, if you're used to short codes with WordPress, this works in a very similar fashion, but you can access so much more. You can see if we take a quick look through, this is the kind of format of a short code. You've got the curly braces, then you've got what it is you're referencing, user, posts, things like that, and then what you actually want to pull out from that particular part. So for example, the user nickname, or the user ID, or the user email address, or the post ID. You kind of get the picture how this works. And that really sounds like an oversimplification of what you can do with this. Now you also have power short codes, which I'm not gonna go into in too much detail. I'll take a look at this when this is finally released as a full product and give you a full demonstration on how it works. But for now, just know the power short codes, as its name suggests, opens up a lot more functionality over the basic short codes that you can use pretty much anyway. So now we've seen that kind of information, let's take a quick look at how it works. Let's just hop in and create a new page. Let's give it a name like short code samples. And now we can start using shortcodes. Now the easiest way to be able to do this is to use the shortcode that basically displays everything you can access. To do that, all we need to do is use that format I've just said. So we can say demo and we'll put a colon and we'll say all and we'll close those curly braces. So this basically is all a shortcode is made of, but it can do way, way more than that. You can add different arguments to this, so much you can do to it. And I'll cover some of those as we go through. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll update, and that's basically it. We don't need to use the short code. We can just literally insert this into a normal paragraph if you want to. Now if we go ahead and preview this in a new tab, this will now give us a pile of short codes that we can use, including examples, multiple examples. So for example, you can see we've got the post, and there's all different things we can reference inside here, the title, the ID, featured image, and so on. You've got other elements, which we can grab the unique ID on content, and we can specify what ID we want. So you have that. You've got all the user information from the ID, the login, email, when they registered, all their name information, including a lot more advanced functionality, like things like admin colors, whether it uses SSL, show the admin bar on the front end. You know, you can kind of reference these and use these in a million different ways. And if we want to take a look at any of these, and you can see there are an awful lot of these, all we need to do is simply go ahead and take a look at the structure. What is it? What's the short code? 
and what the result would be. But if we expand the examples, we can see we'll get even more examples. So you can see we can set things to uppercase, lowercase, extract the first X characters. You can change it between strings, depend upon the kind of example you're looking at. So for example, we may have different options. Let's expand this out. You can see we've got dates and we've got strings. So depending on how you want to reference that data, you can specify the actual format of it in various different ways. And again, you can see this is where we start to see more comprehensive short codes with different conditions being or arguments being attached to them. And like I say, we will take a look at this in a moment. So let's take a really simple example. Here's the title. Let's just go ahead and copy that. So now let's pop back into our page. Let's put above this and we'll just say you're reading. So you're reading the following post and we'll paste that short code in. So you can see it retains that same format. What data are you looking at? So in this example, it's the post and what do you want to pull out of that particular data? In this example, the title. Let's make this grammatically correct by popping that there and we'll just put a colon at the end of it. Hit update. Let's go ahead, refresh our page. At the top, you can see now it says you're reading the following post, short code samples, which, as you can see by the title, is exactly what it is. Now, this is a really, really crazy simple example. But let's go ahead and expand upon this. Say you want to personalize a particular page or content. You can use this basically anywhere in the content you want to add that personalization. And this is where the just the basic power of this really opens up opportunities to get really creative in how you set things up. So if you're using this in templates, you can just drop these short codes in and those will be replaced by the dynamic data that's been pulled in by the logged in user, the post, the page, the time, the date. All of those pieces of information can be accessed and output dynamically. You only have to put in that really simple short code. So let's go ahead now and add in some additional data. So underneath the post, we've got the post date. So again, let's expand those examples. And you can see we've got these more advanced examples. So we're going to use one of these as the basis for changing the actual format of the date as its output. So if we simply use the post date and copy this, it'll come out in a not desirable kind of format. So we want to change that. So let's come into our post and let's just say, and we'll pop in that short code. So we've now updated this to have two pieces of information, the title of the post and the date that it was posted. So again, Let's go ahead and save this information, come back to our test page and refresh. And you can see this now says you're reading the following post, the name of the post, which was written on the date that it was actually posted. And you can see all the data is inside there. But like I say, the format of the date isn't the nicest. So let's make that a little bit more readable. What we could do is we can start adding arguments onto the end of this actual short code. So what we're going to do is we're going to just change the format of this ever so slightly. If we take a look at these examples, you can see they look complicated to start off with, but they're relatively simple and straightforward. You can see we basically end up with double parentheses inside here, so double sets of curly braces. So we've got the date, then the post date, then you can add arguments in there. For this example, it's actually taking two days off, which we don't want to do. But we can then also format the date into the format that we want to use. So let's go and grab this little bit of information and let's modify what we have. So let's go and grab this from the at symbol so we'll copy that from there and we'll simply come over back into our page. Let's change this over. So we're going to come back in. We're going to just open up these brackets. Date. Post date. At the end of it, we're going to pop in that format. And we've now created a more comprehensive short code that does several different things. So if you're used to working with things like Excel formulas, this kind of format will be fairly familiar to you. But what we're doing is we're basically outputting the date, telling it what the date kind of short code is going to be. So it's grabbing the post to date, date this was posted. And then we're formatting it into the day, month, year format. So now if we hop back over to our results page, you'll see now we get a much nicer looking format for the date. So that's how you can take those basic short codes and expand on them to get much more kind of cohesive results, formatting them the way that you want. Like I say, this is a really, really simple example. If you take a look at some of the examples inside you, you can kind of get a real feel for how this all works. Okay, so there's one basic example inside Gutenberg itself, just basic vanilla Gutenberg. But we can use it inside tools like Elementor. So let's see how you can use it with Elementor. 
So I created a blank page in Elementor. We've named it Elementor and Shortcodes, and I've opened up Elementor. So now we want to go ahead and start adding in some dynamic data using those shortcodes. So how do we do it? Let's go and add a container, first of all. Then let's go ahead and add in a title or heading or text editor or whatever you want to use. doesn't really matter. We'll drag that into our layout, and you can see we've got the normal editor. At the moment, you can't use the shortcodes directly inside this editor, which, speaking to Giovanni, this is something that hopefully they will be able to implement. In the same way, you can do this with Bricks Builder, which is one of those functions that I really, really like for a long time. But you can still access it and still use it. We just have to have a slightly different way at this point in time to do it. All we need to do is grab the Dynamic Tags option, scroll right the way to the bottom, and you'll see we've got Dynamic Shortcodes. We click to add that in. You can see we get the typical dynamic option. Click the little wrench icon, and now we have dynamic shortcodes as a text area. So what we can do now is we can easily put in whatever we want, including shortcodes. So let's just try something. Let's say, hey, we want to put the user's name in, so we're going to put in the open curly brackets, user. We'll put their nickname in. Close that out. So now we've got our first show code in, and you can see that inside the editor shows exactly what we're going to see. So again, we can drop in another short code. So we can just say post, and we'll say title. Close that out. Again, you can see this pulls in the relevant data. And as you can see, as we start typing, we can add in all manner of different data. So you can see we can very easily add this dynamic data into any of the sort of text area content headings, anywhere we can put dynamic data. But we're not limited to just that. Let's say we want to add a button in. Now, you can still do this dynamically anyway, but let's just say you want to grab some specific kind of data. Let's go ahead and add a button in. We'll pop that underneath there. We'll click. And now what we can do is we can, again, come into the default options for the link. We can click on the dynamic tag, and we can scroll right the way to the bottom and go to dynamic shortcodes. And again, we can click to open up the shortcodes, and we can put whatever we want inside there. So you could very easily build up dynamic URLs using this kind of set of options. And all you need to do is go ahead and grab what you want from the relevant shortcodes. So let's say you wanted to put a edit page inside here. You were creating some kind of front-end dashboard, and you had a specific edit page you wanted to add a string to at the end of it. Let's say we want to do something like Use the normal URL. Maybe we want to have a custom dashboard on this. We've got admin set up. And then we can say the question mark equals. And now we need to grab some kind of dynamic data. So again, let's come back over to our short code examples. Let's come right the way back up. And let's say, well, we want the ID of the post we're currently working on. Because we want to go over to a dedicated editing page. Well, we can grab that post ID, which, as you can see, will return just the numeric value of that post. But you can expand that out and get different results should you want to. So let's just say we're happy with the post ID. We'll say copy that, head back in, and we're going to say this is our custom URL. So we'll just say ID equals, and we'll pop in that short code. So we'll say we're happy with the way that actually looks. Like I say, it's a, it's a bit of a botched together URL, but it's just to demonstrate how this could work. And then we can change this to edit post, for example, and we'll publish this page. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, previewing it. And we hover over, you can see there's all our dynamic data we've pulled in. We go to edit post. If we just click on this, it's not going to go anywhere, but you'll see the URL. You can see if we take a look at the top, that has pulled in the ID for this particular page, and we can now do whatever we want. So we can pass these variables around with relative ease using the shortcode options as part of dynamic shortcodes. Again, that's just another example of how you can use it in conjunction with various different features inside a tool like Elementor and really open up the possibilities of what you can do, not just simple inline dynamic data, but so much more. Now, sticking with a similar set of examples, I'm using generate blocks for this particular example. If we expand things out, I've just got a basic couple of entries inside your headlines and so on. And as you can see, it's pulling in dynamic data. We can use this as I've just demonstrated. But we can also use it with some third party tools. And this is where I think this is really going to open up possibilities to go beyond just the plugin itself and how that can put out the data. So, for example, we've got this edit post. Well, let's say we wanted to hide this for some various different reasons, and we wanted to sort of check it against some dynamic data. Well, what we can do is we can select our button. We can use a free plugin. We've got Dynamic Visibility here, which is a totally free plugin. I've covered this in its own dedicated video, link in the description. And let's say we wanted to set something up on here for a URL path. And now we can use dynamic data inside here to either show or hide just using those short codes. 
So again, if we come back to our short codes, you could basically use anything you want from inside you to check against. So you could check against user levels and things like that, user names and so on, using the dynamic data. We're going to use a kind of convoluted example, but just to demonstrate how it would work. We're going to drop in the permalink for this particular page. So without it, let's just get rid of that a second. You'll see if we update this and take a look. You can see our button is being displayed because no conditions are set against it. But let's say for some re odd reason we wanted to hide it if the URL for this page was the URL for this page. It's a weird example, but I just want to demonstrate how easy it is. Let's just drop in that simple URL. So we've got the post permalink. In other words, the short code for the permalink for this particular page. So we'll update this, hop back over to that page, and we'll refresh. And you see that now hides it because, well, the URL is the URL for this page. Like I say, it's a weird example, but I just want to show you how you could just grab any data you wanted from those short codes and how you could use it with third party plugins to have conditional checking, conditional visibility, logic, all those kinds of things. I'm really excited about this tool. I really liked what tokens brought to dynamic content for Elemental. And the fact we can now start to use that, or we will be able to use that when this is released without the need for Elementor, and to also give us additional functionality inside Elementor. I like having the ability to easily drop in dynamic data in line in my content, like we can see here with the permalink, with the short code, with the name of the author, with the date this was posted, and all those kinds of things. This just gives you so much functionality, so much power that goes beyond what you can do with the basics. And everything I've tested with so far, that's generate press, and generate blocks with native Gutenberg with Elementor. It's worked the way that I've expected it to very quickly and very easily. So like I say, I'm super excited to get my hands on the final release of this and start experimenting with what you can do. But I wanted just to demonstrate some simple examples. And if you're a token user from Dynamic Content for Elementor, you'll know how powerful this is. And I'm sure you'll be just as excited as I am for how this could open up so many creative possibilities without the reliance upon Elementor. Now, if you want to sign up for the beta release or you want to get more information, there's a link in the description below that will take you over and show you more information about what Dynamic Short Codes will be bringing to the table. Thank you, Giovanni, for letting me have access to this. And I'm super excited to see what people will actually be able to do with this once it's released and you get your hands on it. As always, though, give me your feedback in the comment section below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.